for those who don't know, you are the the trainer and the coach and the dietitian for the world of MMA and different other sports as well, right? Uh, yeah, we work with professional athletes in the NFL, in the NHL, the, the MLB. We work with Hollywood celebrities, pro wrestling, um, CrossFit for sure. So we work with quite a large uh, database of athletes, you know, powerlifters and such. Um, our business model is, is we work with what we call career athletes. We work with athletes very intensely 52 weeks out of the year. What we're trying to do is help athletes from the time we start with them all the way through the time that they actually retire as, as a multi-time world champion, multi-millionaire. That, that's our goal. So basically somebody who's into fitness or bodybuilding in general, can they, can they benefit from Dolce Diet? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're a, we're a lifestyle company. Our primary goal is to help people live long lives. And I, I like to say that we use narcissism and, and finance as the Trojan horse for us to educate our clients on how to truly feed and fuel themselves, how to periodize their training, how to focus on restorative methods in order to improve their life, improve their longevity. The Dolce Diet became basically uh, the brand in the, in the world of MMA. Is your business very competitive? We're the brand. We're the Q-tip in this market. We, mm -hmm. and I say this humbly, but we created this market. No one was doing this. I've been doing this since 1999, working with Team Henzo Gracie. I was working this while the sport was still called NHB, before there were unified rules under mixed martial arts, before Zufa came in and bought the UFC. I was doing exactly what I'm doing right now with some of the world's greatest athletes back in those days. We're the only legally compliant team in elite mixed martial arts doing what we're doing. The other teams, they're self-proclaimed self nutrition experts, weight management coaches. That's absolutely ridiculous, and it's dangerous, and they're legally liable for putting the information that they are out there to athletes that are getting kicked in the skull 24 hours later after enduring terrible weight cuts during calorie deprivation and nutrient exclusion. A lot of people just, you know, uh, basically describe the steroid use as very rampant in the MMA world. Do you think it's? Do you take it as an issue? Do you, do you think it, it, sh it should be talked about, or do you think it's, it's just like any other sport, and there's no point of even you know kind of emphasizing on it? You know, in your opinion, what's what's going on with that? No, I definitely think it should be talked about. It should be talked about openly, and it should be a very honest discussion. But I also don't believe that the issue inside the world of mixed martial arts is any different than that of any other professional sport. But let's be clear: PEDs do work. And we understand that the athletes know that. That's why it's very easy for the athletes to fall into that. But I think USADA being brought in by the UFC to regulate the drug testing policies for the UFC athletes, this is the most rigorous drug testing protocol in any of the professional sports. There's no union protecting the athletes inside the UFC negotiating with USADA of when they can actually test them, what the test can actually be, the dark periods when the athletes can't be tested. UFC athletes can be tested 24 hours a day, 12 months a year, mm -hmm. period, the end. Other sports, we won't hear about it as much because truly other sports almost have – um, the, the, the organi organizing bodies kind of turn a blind eye to drug use. They're allowing their athletes to dope during certain times and certain periods and jump through certain loopholes. Do you think that penalties are, are strict enough? Do you think they should be stricter? What Personally, mm -hmm. I'd like to see a, a first-time offense lifetime ban. Wow. If an athlete says, well, six months, nine months, I only fight every four or five months anyway, mm -hmm. I'll roll the dice. I hate hearing about it. It, it, it hurts the credibility of the clean athletes that are out there hurts the credibility of the, the coaches and teams that are trying to just, you know, do good work. A lifetime ban, first time offense, done deal. You get caught, you're out within the first month. But let's say within the first year, you'd never see anyone fail a drug test again. P athletes would be so scared. Mm -hmm. They would be forced to train naturally and use a holistic approach. Now, I want to get your opinion on something. Recently, John Jones made a comeback. Yeah. And uh, as he made a comeback, everybody right away started talking about his physique, right? He started working yeah. out more. Do you think his weight gain uh, has something, had a negative effect on him? What do you think from your professional opinion? You know, he put on, on some weight, but he didn't put on 20 pounds. He maybe put on 10 pounds of functional muscle over that year's time maximum. I thought John fought a calculated fight. I think he won easily, but he wasn't nearly as dominant as we're used to seeing. Right. I think he simply didn't have the right fuel in his body to go out there and perform. He had half a tank of gas, not due to the size of his engine. His engine wasn't adequately fueled. 
But also we can't dismiss the fact that John had gone through an extensive layoff and he had some lifestyle challenges that could shake any one of our mental psychological states in leading into performance. So what is your prediction on a fight with the CDAS coming up? Uh, as, as you know, I've been in the game long enough to know not to make predictions. I know it's <laughs> going to be a great fight. I love rivalries, and I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm friends with both guys, so it, it's even more difficult for me to choose. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the true light heavyweight championship of the world. Those two guys right there are number one and two um, in the world in that weight class. I think it'll be a very tough fight, much tougher than the first fight. And again, I would put it very, very close to 50-50. When Ronda got, you know, when, when she lost last year, when she got knocked out, what was your just initial reaction when, when this actually happened? Um, I, was, I was devastated. I was devastated for my friend. When I say I work with these athletes as career athletes, I'm all in. I mean, I'm 100% all in in their, their life. This is, this is family to me. But ultimately, it's her. She's the one that's locked alone in that cage. It's her name. It's her career. It's her life. And then, you know, myself and the rest of the, the, the team and the support system, you know, we have to kind of stand on the sidelines and watch and support her through that process and, and let her know that we love her and we support her and we believe in her and, you know, really – Nothing changes for us other than we game plan to move forward and we learn from it. Did you see that danger coming or, or was this just another opponent in your opinion? When this fight was announced, Holly was, was relegated to the underdog status and the media was panning her. The, the critics and the fans were, were blasting the UFC saying they were trying to protect Ronda by giving her a softball in Holly home. And I did it quite a few interviews months before the fight saying that Holly Holm was the most decorated opponent Ronda had ever faced. Holly Holm knows how to win. She can win devastating or she can win ugly. And that's a scary opponent because that opponent is willing to do whatever it takes to win regardless. And then there was another opponent Ronda was facing that wasn't inside the octagon. It was the fact that this was her third title defense in eight months' time. No other champion has ever done that before. And no other champion has the media schedule that Ronda has. 5.30 in the morning, we have to be awake, Ronda's in hair and makeup. 7 a.m., we're in a limo driving two or three hours across the different cities on these continents to do media. Holly didn't have to do any of that. Now, what do, what do some MMA fighters do that? I mean, I, I, know, I notice that they fight way too much and way too soon. You know, why do they strategically do it so often? Yeah, it's, 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 it's ratings and it's money. I mean, this is mm. it's sports entertainment, right? But that's their biggest flaw. They need a team behind them helping advise them on what's in their best interest for their health because what's best for their health is in the best interest of their career and their longevity. Her comeback now, um, is the approach the same as before as far as getting ready for a new fight or is something, something being changed and something different is going to happen uh, with Ronda's uh, comeback? Yeah, I, I think like any of us, we always learn more from our, our losses, you know, from our failings. And Ronda has learned much more from this um, experience than probably all the fights of her career put together. Ronda's last loss before Holly Holm was in the Olympics, where she lost the match, I believe, in the quarterfinals and battled back and, and walked away with the bronze medal and went undefeated ever since. So Ronda's last loss, she actually earned a bronze medal and was so motivated and so fueled that she didn't lose a single match or competition since that point. She has a good understanding of what happened. She knows exactly what she needs to change about herself, but also about her circumstances mm -hmm. to come back and truly um, unlock her full potential. And that's what this is about. You know, we need that, what I call the mirror test sometimes, to truly see ourselves and make adjustments. If you're using stuff, you're running stuff prior to going in and you don't have the proper stuff to come off, your body's going to crash. And you know, I crashed real hard getting uh, when I went down. I was down for a year and I, I crashed so hard. I lost so much muscle. I lost so much. I didn't lose so much weight. I just lost so much hardness yes. in my muscle. And I've been, I've been training now for like two, two, what, about a month really training like, and eating. And it's, it's, it's hard to get back. But you got to get back there because... It